presentation. This was supposed to be more of an open discussion. So we have some slides to kind of go through, you know, um, what we've been doing and, you know, kind of what the future plans are. But we want you to just interject with questions throughout. So we can kind of go through the slides. And if you have anything you want to say in the meantime, feel free to say it. So I deal with kind of mobile across the board and kind of manage different teams. And Patrick here is our senior developer on mobile. And Patrick started, you started about how many months ago? About six months ago. So, you know, our big thing was kind of assessing where we are at this point and then what are the changes we need to make sure that we're going to be relevant in mobile because mobile is going to be the biggest growth area for us in the future. And if you remember, I don't know if you went to Sue's talk in the morning, but she talked about the two big strategic priorities for the foundation. And when we talk about the foundation, we also mean working with the community on this. And those two areas were, you know, editor retention and mobile, and particularly mobile growth. And that is a little ninja. So this is what we're going to talk about today, so you kind of know um, what we're going to be focusing on. If you have any questions even beyond this, feel free to ask them anytime during the talk. And so some of these are pretty basic. You already know, you know, why is mobile so important? Um, we want to talk about where we were, like how we got to this point, what was our path to mobile, you know, from Wikipedia's perspective, um, what we're doing right now, and um, our new approach to how we're learning more about changing the way we approach mobile, and then what our future plans are. And then because of like how we're doing this, we want it to be a very collaborative approach. So we want everybody to be involved in like, you know, what are the next steps for mobile for us? And there's a nice picture of mobile. So this is a big thing for us. Um, our, if you look at kind of the global population, well, this is all pretty standard stuff that I think everybody knows if you read any of the trades or you even just read The Economist. You know, mobile is growing very, very rapidly worldwide, um, especially in the global south. I don't really like that term, but, you know, it's kind of the more developing countries. And for most of them, that is their only way of access. For a lot of them, it's their only way of accessing the internet or the web. So you could obviously, obviously, for us, when we talk about growth, um, mobile is going to be probably the only way people interact with Wikipedia. And these are other figures to kind of support that data um, in terms of the way people page views. If you count page views in terms of the mobile experience. By 2014, it's going to surpass the way people interact with content as opposed to how they interact on a PC. And I think some of the latest numbers I've seen in terms of just sales of devices, so PCs opposed to uh, mobile devices, and I, this does not count tablets at all. Um, mobile devices will surpass PC sales by the beginning of next year, so we're talking about less than six months from now. So that shift completely to, for mobile interaction um, on all types of web properties is basically, you know, taking off where you see PC growth is stagnant. And to kind of give you an example of this and how a lot of, you know, some other sites are treating this, obviously people, you know, talk about Facebook. Facebook has probably been the most aggressive out of any internet property in making sure people have a good experience on mobile. Still debatable, but let's just say, you know, compared to us, they've been far ahead of the curve. And if you look, um, you know, 20% of their visits, you know, to Facebook are coming from mobile. From For us right now, it's less than a percent, which is pretty much unacceptable because most people are going to be accessing Wikipedia from a mobile device from now on. And there's even some really interesting numbers. Even when I talked to Facebook a couple of years ago, they said more than half of their visits in Indonesia, this is, you know, two or three years ago, came from mobile devices. So depending on the country, I mean, you know, we talked about India and Brazil, you look at Turkey, Thailand, mobile is where like the biggest growth is. So let me talk a little about where we were from the foundation's perspective and how we kind of stumbled upon mobile and how, you know, more and more we, we knew it was going to be important. So this was our first uh, experience, you know, our first project on mobile and actually it came from the community and Patrick will talk a little bit about that right now. If I was shorter. Your friend made fun of me. No. <laughs> so <laughs> 
So as Cool said, this was the first implementation that was uh, developed by the community, which I think was like roughly in 2007. Uh, this was developed. It, 2006, 2007. Um, <coughs> we're not actually sure exactly who developed it. It's based on a uh, PHP open source um, project called HaHa, which implements the WML spec. So it's actually for much older phones that don't support XHTML. And it's still currently in use and amazingly still gets quite a bit of traffic. Um, but we we don't even advertise it anywhere, so we don't even know how people find it other than just you know stumbling upon it by putting it in mobile. Uh, all of the the mobile implementation that we have now is this better C brand? <laughs> Is that better? Anyway, <laughs> so all of the uh, the current implementation um, goes to whatever the language is dot m dot Wikipedia, uh, but we still get people that just type this in and think this is the mobile experience. So with the the newer implementation, this will end up going away. Yeah, and what uh, thank you, and what uh, Patrick kind of also talked about what I thought was really important was that you know the foundation did not have the bandwidth to do anything you know for to create a mobile gateway, and this was completely community created. Like we were talking about end of two thousand six, two thousand seven, and we didn't even know who created it. We didn't you know know a lot of the development behind it, but you know that's the great thing about kind of having it very open is that if we don't have the ability to do things, we want to make sure that the community can go in and actually provide you know, some type of, uh, provide them with resources so they can provide a solution if, you know, the need, need, is, need is needed. Okay. So the current mobile implementation that's in production today is, uh, was provided by a contractor and is written in Ruby. Uh, one of the reasons that we don't like this is we don't have a lot of Ruby expertise within the foundation. As you know, MediaWiki is based on PHP and you know, we'd like to be able to utilize PHP and the expertise that we have in the foundation as much as, as, much as possible. Um, and one of the drawbacks of the Ruby implementation is anything that we want to use out of core MediaWiki has to be re-implemented in Ruby. So even you know, localization, being able to provide things, um, provide anything that MediaWiki provides is just hard because you have to re-implement everything. And since the content, when you go to the, the Ruby gateway, has to be uh, accessed from the core cluster, it's another HTTP request unless that's cached. And we also can't take advantage of the caching layer that the rest of the site utilizes. Um, so it just isn't as efficient and, you know, as it could be. Plus, because it's based on Ruby, we have to have a completely different setup on the servers. Um, so we just have a limited number of servers um, that are configured with Ruby and allowed you know, to serve the content for the mobile gateway. Um, <coughs> basically, how the, the current Ruby implementation works is it accesses the content from the core cluster, brings it back over, and scrapes, uh, scrapes the page, and it rips out the different elements that aren't appropriate for the mobile rendering. Um, and it just isn't a very efficient process, and it uses memcache, you know, to store that uh, representation. So at least it has a little bit of caching, but not what we would expect, you know, from the core cluster. So we currently have a, a iOS app at, in the Apple App Store, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can see it's ranked rather high. It's an open code base. It's all available on GitHub, so you can pull it down. Uh, you can make any changes that you want, and you know, we're pretty open to ex ex taking any patches. One of the most recent things that we changed was adding proper UTF-8 support. We had some internationalization issues with the app, but those have all been fixed and approved last week, so the new version works better. <laughs> um, we translated over 25 languages, and um, we use the same community translation uh, to translate wiki that regular media wiki projects like Wikipedia use. Um, one of the nice features that the app has that we don't have in the, the regular web experience is the geolocation of articles, so you can see you know, where things are located. And some of the ideas we had for the future were to be able to provide um, you know, pictures if it's things that we don't have, or if you're in an area, be able to tell you other things that are around there based on the coordinates and you know, GPS. And um, currently, we get about 150,000 downloads a month of the app, so it's fairly popular. Um, that's about it. 
So this became, oh, go ahead. So, so the iOS app um, actually talks to the Ruby gateway because it was developed by the same contractor that, that developed the Ruby gateway originally. And there's an API, a rough API that that provides. It pulls back that content and just basically renders it in a, a WebKit representation, you know, on iOS canvas. So. so because, you know, that install was basically, you know, Ruby and it was read only, um, there's no way to contribute. There's no feedback loop on mobile. I mean, it's like if we were working with any other kind of client out there and they're just pulling from our API and doing some screen scraping that it was a one-way experience. And what was pretty interesting for us is that we didn't really communicate this well. I was actually in Russia, I think, uh, maybe a month or two ago, and I was meeting with some community members, and they were frustrated with the Wikipedia mobile experience because they were trying to edit, you know, they were trying to see, you know, their watch list and so forth. And, you know, people didn't even know that it was only a read-only site because with all of the stuff that we ha that happened in mobile up until you know like you know a year ago, it was all developed outside. We just you know made our APIs available and people you know create their own Wikipedia experiences from that. But since it wasn't implemented and part of the, our core MediaWiki architecture, that there was no ability for people to contribute back into it. So. Regardless of the, the the lack of work that we've done, you know, up until like a f you know a few months ago aggressively on mobile, we're still seeing pretty amazing traffic. I mean, so you know, organically, a lot of growth is just going to mobile. I mean, that's the way people are interacting. So we're still trying to figure out a lot of our data there, but we know, you know, it's been significant, probably an average of you know five to seven percent growth per month, but anywhere even from two to fifteen. But that's just on English. I mean, we need to do a lot of studies across all of the languages, but you know, we see kind of in some ways the page views on, you know, from PC devices kind of, you know, that line kind of tapering off a bit. It's still growing, but you see the rapid growth of people accessing Wikipedia from a mobile device. So red is just basically, you know, your benchmark. So the blue is the growth, like the page views that people are accessing, you know, uh, Wikipedia from, from mobile sites. From, from mobile devices. The thing is, this number could actually pr be pretty a little bit higher. I was just talking to Eric Zakta earlier, and we're not getting a good enough data yet, but this doesn't include um, people accessing uh, Wikipedia on a mobile device if they're accessing you know, the actual PC site. Because you know, we're still working on redirects um, with user agents. Patrick's going to talk about that a little bit more. So this growth is actually underestimated you know, as, as far as we know at this point. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about what we're doing right now to make sure that we have a more robust uh, mobile strategy. And this is a nice picture of us at work. So like I, going back to the talk this morning when Sue uh, mentioned what our strategic goals are, and a big one for us is making sure that we keep up with mobile growth. So. If you look at, she talked about by the by, pretty much a year from now, so June of 2012, we need to have, you know, we should have at least two billion um, page views on mobile. So the growth that we have right now is kind of more where the blue line is, right, right here, and that's with us, you know, not really doing, you know, as much work where we kind of working with more partners making you know, the uh, API more accessible for people to do interesting things with Wikipedia, kind of rendering it like in, in different experience. So you know, we're looking for at least 7.44% uh, growth to hit our target. You know, so getting more people to engage on Wikipedia and mobile. But if you want to be much more aggressive, which I think we need to be to be comparable with a lot of other sites out there, we're looking at more of you know, 10 to 15% growth. So, so one of my goals when coming to the foundation was to you know take on all the mobile projects and look. The first thing that I focused on was rewriting the uh, mobile gateway as an actual MediaWiki extension and writing it in PHP. So the very first phase of that was just to look at what the the Ruby gateway provides and implement that as a MediaWiki extension, and that's what we've done. And one of the nice things about it being an extension is that 
unlike the Ruby gateway where you have to make another HTTP request, go to the core cluster, get the content, bring it back over, um, we're able to use just the output buffering capability in PHP, grab, grab the content as it would be rendered by you know, whatever skin you had installed in MediaWiki, and take out the sections that aren't appropriate and you know for a mobile representation and that's all configurable so you can use this extension on any media wiki installation that you have if, if you have custom things that you've added you can just add those uh, things that you want to remove from mobile and it's really easy to work with and you d unlike the Ruby implementation you don't have to have a bunch of extra uh, software and a different configuration to run it it's install the extension it should just work out of the box um, let's see what else can I say about it it's fairly performant. Uh, one of the things that uh, is a little expensive is we have to use a, a DOM parser to be able to pull in the document and decide which sections you want to pull out. So you're always looking for uh, anyone in the community that can come up with a better way uh, to parse that and, and look for speed. But with the profiling that we've done so far, it looks to be looks to be pretty performant. Um, and one of our goals with the extension also is to use open standards, so using things like HTML5, CSS3, and just trying to stay away from any proprietary technologies out there so that it works with you know, pretty much every device that's available. Uh, one of the things that we're utilizing with the new mobile extension, which is nice, is the Werfel database, which is a, basically a database of roughly 14,000 devices and all of their capabilities. So in the future, with the extension, when we start adding you know, new interface you know, elements and, and different things, we'll be able to uh, know exactly what the, the phone supports. That Werfel database gives you things like the, the size of the screen on the device, you know, w if it supports JavaScript, at what level of support it has for JavaScript, uh, you know, pretty much everything you could ever want to know about a mobile device is in that database, and we take advantage of that. Right now, it's um, in the current state of the extension, we don't use that much other than is this a wireless device? Should we render the, mo the mobile site? But uh, moving forward, we're going to use more than that. And the extension also right now provides a XHTML view as well as a, a WML view. So it will replace the mobile, the original mobile gateway that you saw based on HaHa -ha earlier. So now we'll just have the one mobile site that will work for old phones and, and new phones alike. So what, oh, go ahead. You know, I didn't catch the last part of it. So. Yeah. Oh, why not? Okay. So the question he asked is, why don't we just use a skin versus the extension? Um, and it's a really good question. I mean, Wikia decided to go the skin route in uh, in their mobile implementation. And originally, when I looked at that, um, it was going to be pretty difficult to port because Wikia has a lot of customizations that we don't have in, in the core product. Um, and when talking to Brian Vibber and a few of uh, the other developers, we decided to go the route of the extension because we felt they could give them the most flexibility um, as far as being able to re-render the page you know, completely different um, as well as inject other functionality and just didn't feel that a skin would be appropriate, but it's still possibly, you know, a, an approach that could be taken. We just decided to go the extension route, just basically based on flexibility to be able to do do more. So, you know, with this strategy, you know, because we're doing this now and back into PHP instead of Ruby, this allows us to kind of leverage, you know, community developers again. So what we're trying to do is build out a better ecosystem that really also takes mobile to it into account. And so right now, especially if you're interested in developing, I mean, come talk to Patrick afterward. But what we're trying to do is get better coordination on figuring out like what projects we want to build out on mobile. So the foundation works better with community devs because before community devs were just doing mobile on their own. And now we're kind of like, you know, laying the groundwork. So it's part of MediaWiki as an extension. And then 
to make sure that you know we have more robust, uh, more robust API and better documentation, this is going to allow us to partner with a lot of people to expand reach and the experience of you know Wikipedia, even possibly as contributions. I mean, we're probably trying to figure out as a way we can extend authentication so people could log on and you know different uh, web experiences to get back to Wikipedia. But what we're going to do is make sure that you know partners, especially in the mobile space, can distribute Wikipedia easier. And then also think about, you know, what can we do in the developer network space? Because, you know, we, we don't have the resources. We don't, like, have, to, you know, Android developers, you know, um, Symbian developers, well, which will probably change the Windows Mobile. But we want to be able to provide them with resources so they can do innovative things, like maybe they do, like, an augmented reality app, you know, with Wikipedia content and make that more available to people at large to increase that experience. And so part of you know what we're coming here to talk about is also to make sure that you guys know that you can get involved in a lot of different ways. And you know, two of the main ways you can kind of know what's going on is that on IRC, we're usually there. I'm not on right now, but a lot of us are on that are involved um, on Wikimedia Mobile. So you know, just go to Freenode. And also subscribe to the list. And if you have any comments, a lot of what we want to try to do is get a lot of people engaged in like user testing, for example. So, you know, if you see things on your device, if things aren't rendering correctly, um, if there's no redirect, we want you to really contribute and get involved, you know, in, in these two channels right here. So, Originally on the schedule, we had this broken up into like two groups, and uh, the two researchers that are mainly kind of trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in terms of uh, usability um, with mobile all across the world weren't able to come. So I've kind of incorporated that into our presentation, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. And if you have any questions regarding the research that's coming out right now, you know, feel free to ask whatever you want. So we're starting our research project right now. It just began a little earlier this year. And the three countries, in terms of qualitative research we're doing, is as a benchmark, um, started out in India. They just finished uh, doing some research in Brazil. And they're going to start in um, the United States um, sometime this month. And this is a little bit more detail on what studies are being involved right now in terms of mobile research. And as you can see, they just finished up um, doing research in India. They're trying to get a very representative sa sample of kind of the different groups. So like they went to Brazil, and you know it's a little bit different in terms of the economics of like Sao Paulo, Salvador, uh, Porto Alegre, and they're going to do one in the United States. And you know the methodology basically is you know they would have like try to get a diverse group of people go to their house. They're getting like potential editors. Um, editors right now, people that you know don't use mobile very often, that are kind of you know experimenting with different devices, and then cataloging those experiences to try to figure out what do we need to do on our side, and also work with partners, community members, and so forth to make sure that people can reach Wikipedia and then eventually also contribute. And then from that, from the information we get from you know the qualitative study, we're going to incorporate that into a, a quant study, which we have most of that already laid out right now. That should go out pretty soon, and it's going to be in multiple languages. And then we're going to find about a little bit more. You know, what is scalable across all the languages and experiences? Then what do we need to do? That's probably into unique to like you know something in like the Russian language as opposed to Portuguese, or even like a smaller. Uh, project, you know, like Swahili, is there like certain tools that we need to provide that people will be able to engage a little bit more on a mobile device? So, you know, we were looking at some of the statistics on this, and, you know, by the end of uh, 2012, you're going to have like, you know, 68% of the world, in, you know, accessing the internet on mobile, and it looks like, you know, 77% within, within the following year. And more than 30% uh, of the world, you know, at that time, their only interaction is going to be on the internet is going to be on mobile. So we know how important it is to make sure that we kind of look at the entire spectrum and figure out, like, if you're on an S40 device and you don't have, you know, the great greatest browsing experience, how can we do something that everybody can kind of get access to the content, even if it's offline? So currently, if people go to uh, Wikipedia and they, on a mobile device and they go to the, re the regular site, not to the mobile, 
there's a JavaScript redirect that happens. And unfortunately, with the JavaScript redirect, it's only a handful of devices, and they're hand hard coded in there. So I think right now there's like 14 devices that'll be caught and, and redirected. So when we're doing these um, studies, you see a lot of people saying, "Why am I not directed? You know, on my phone. I've got a great phone. That you totally work. Why isn't it working?" So to combat this, um, we've decided in the caching layer for the main site using Squid, we've added a series of ACLs that will redirect automatically. And also using that Werfel database, going through and trying to come up with the list of ACLs that we should match, um, we're able to get a much bigger list. Right now, I think we're matching 13,000 devices versus 14. So uh, once that goes onto all of the squids, you know, it'll be a much better experience for people. They'll be redirected to the mobile uh, experience and, and hopefully have a better time at it. So one of the things we're also doing right now in terms of our research is really focusing on user stories. So it's like, what is that experience for users and try to figure out is that, you know, pretty common across, you know, different areas, different languages, and even trying to figure out like the demographics and what those user experiences are on a mobile device. And like I said, we just got the information from India. I think the, the Brazil. Okay, why don't we do that? Sorry, I skipped something. <laughs> Go ahead, talk about it. Okay. Okay. Sorry, we skipped over one part. Uh, one of the other things that people you know, wanted to make sure is that the, the mobile site was available in as many you know languages, as many um, various like multi-byte fonts uh, supported, and <coughs> so we're looking to implement that as well. Uh, some of the things we're looking at in the future are uh, using web fonts and things to to render, uh, you know, render on the devices the the fonts in the the best way possible, um, and we have various community members that are helping us with the, the translation and, and adding the fonts, like Seabran <laughs> in the back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he was not paying attention. <laughs> so anyway, and this is a great example of um, where someone maybe that's not strong in PHP could definitely contribute you know, and help if, you know, with any of those other things besides just the core programming of the extension. So, so getting back to the user story. so. What we're, what we're finding out is kind of different cases on like how people interact with the content and especially like depending on their language and experience and their devices. I mean, you know, what is their mobile connectivity? It ranges all across the board depending on where you are in the world. And, you know, all of you come from different places, so obviously you have a very different experience in terms of, you know, how you engage with the content. And so what we're trying to do is create a lot of user stories and try to figure out, you know, what problems do we, do we need to address and how do we address them? And right, at, like I said, we just got like the research report from India. We're starting to go through that information a couple, we got that about a month or two ago. And we just got Brazil like right when we were flying into uh, Israel. So I mean, I was reading it on the plane and I'm still catching up on a lot of it. But it's really interesting because like, for example, you know, we're, what I did is pick out some of the interesting uh, user stories because it, it's representative of a lot of things we're seeing across the board. Um, and those are the things that I think where it's most easy for us to address because those are scalable because we don't have a very big team. But if you look at this case, for example, um, this is a 20-year-old uh, guy in uh, northern, northern India. And um, he actually likes to look at most of his content in his native language, which is Punjabi. And a lot of the more rich articles, like according to like some of the... Um, uh, you know, famous sites in that region, uh, the articles actually are much better in Punjabi than they are in Hindi or in English. But, you know, there's no way for him to s search in Punjabi. Like, you know, there's no way for him to translate over easily to like Hindi or English. So like we need to kind of figure out, you know, what tools do we need to build across multiple languages so people can actually search. Because, you know, the things that we were thinking about actually was, you know, disregarding a lot of these things. But when we kind of come back and figure out, I mean, these are things we need to do across all languages. So this is giving us a better idea of what we're missing in terms of how we can support a lot of our users out there. And so this is like another case, like in terms of, um, you know, if you're like in the developed world, maybe you use like if you, 
you know, you use Instapaper. If you go to like Wikipedia, you want to get an offline version of Wikipedia. Or if you're on the site, you know, pe people can use Pedia Press, uh, PDF, various versions to get something offline. But you know, and people in in India, for example, if they don't have a smartphone and they want to have an offline version, be able to send it to something else. There's no features, there's no sharing tools on mobile Wikipedia right now. And it's really important for them to be able to like cut what they need, send it over, and use it for their daily lives. So these are some of the th other patterns that we're seeing in terms of the usage in places like India. So this is an interesting issue that we have to kind of think a lot about on how to address. But this was particularly coming out of India so far. Um, maybe we'll start seeing this out of some other countries. but. When people, you know, in terms of when people experience stuff on mobile, they want things a little bit faster and more concise. And right now, even though you can collapse articles on, you know, mobile Wikipedia, there's not like summaries or condensed articles of that. And that seemed to be a kind of a recurring theme we've been hearing from people in India. They wanted summaries. And we don't know what's, we, we can't really address that easily from a technical perspective. And that'll obviously change the dynamics of Wikipedia. I mean, do we rewrite content? You know, and that's something we would have, you know, a discussion with the community about, obviously. But it's interesting to see that, you know, the way people are interacting, because you talk about form factors and screen size and all of those things and contextual information and how people want that delivered, it really changes the experience of the information that they get. So this, in terms of them getting like, you know, like small snippets of like Wikipedia summarized, you know, how do we address those issues? I mean, that seems to be something that starts coming up and what people want to see. Another thing is, you know, still also even pertains to um, the main site, but, you know, in India we're hearing a lot of things coming back is where people like to see much more multimedia com um, content, even on a mobile device, which is kind of conflicts where they wanted to have things that didn't, you know, weren't bandwidth hogs and weren't, you know, very costly to access. But at the same time, people wanted to have a richer experience. They were seeing, you know, more applications out there that would allow for, you know, uh, animated, you know, uh, content, things that where they can interact a little bit more, and Wikipedia doesn't really provide that on mobile. So this is something we also have to think about as well, is, you know, is this something that we want to do, or do we want to provide more robust APIs so developers out there can create apps which integrate Wikipedia content into some other kind of experience? And this kind of goes back to uh, the language issue. Um, in Brazil, uh, for example, 85% um, of the people in Brazil access only Portuguese content. You know, there's a lot of people that don't speak English. The other 15% um, can access English and can kind of go back and forth, but then the vast majority don't have uh, the ability to like read in English. So, you know, if you're on a mobile device and you guys all know this, when you're searching for something, um, you know, having uh, autocomplete is very, very helpful. Well, sometimes unless you get like crazy words that come up and we know how that embarrassing that can be. but in a lot of cases, it, it makes the experience easier because, you know, when you're on mobile, people don't like to type. You know, it's, it's a little bit cumbersome, but Portuguese, there is no autocomplete. So that was a, seemed to be a frustrating thing that came out of our ethnographic research in Brazil, and it's something that we have to address probably in all languages. The other thing is what mobile has done is really change user behavior in a lot of ways. So people expect a lot of this stuff to be native. Um, we are, you know, really focused trying to be as open as possible to make it sure it's a mobile web experience. But, you know, some you can't really change user behavior to, to some degree. And what people want is they want, you know, some of these experiences to be native into like the operating system or the phone itself. And so when they're like searching for Wikipedia, like they're not really conscious about, oh, I have to go and get to the site and so forth. They want it to be instant information. Like they could search directly, you know, through their OS. So this is something from, from both from our own technical capabilities and working with partners to figure out, you know, how do we get involved with them and make sure that even on like their OS, whether, you know, it's Windows Mobile or it's the playbook on BlackBerry on a tablet, that, you know, Wikipedia is really integrated into that experience. And this is a really, really big thing that uh, hits people pretty hard in the global south or developing countries is that um, when people are using their credits on, I mean, you know, 95% of the world, if you're not in a developed country, I mean, there's not a lot of all you can eat plans out there. I mean, it's very expensive, you know, to use a mobile device. And 
for someone to like look at content all day, it can be very, very costly. So people don't necessarily access mobile Wikipedia as much as they would like to because it uses up their phone credit. So one thing that Sue mentioned in her talk earlier today, and some, you know, I've already been looking at and discussing it, discussing it as they're like, you know, zero rate, at least low rate data plans where people can get to educational content, you know, including Wikipedia without taking it away from, you know, kind of their norm normal data bill. So this is going to be an interesting challenge for us because when we talk about contribution, we don't really know how we're going to handle this. When I talk to a lot of my uh, colleagues that work at some of the other top Q&A sites, you know, there's like Quora, um, Ask.com, there's a whole bunch, even like Google, they were saying that people on mobile actually contribute much more frequently than on a PC. I mean, it's fast, it's easy. Um, and it's actually been skewing younger. It looks like the demographics, the more people that are contributing on mobile are younger, which is really good for us. The big problem is because of the nature of the device and you know how people are in a certain situation you know, dealing with mobile content, the quality in general seems to be much lower. And we know that this is a big issue for us. We want people to contribute to Wikipedia. We want to raise the quality. However, that's in direct conflict on how people interact with mobile content. When people contribute anything on a mobile device, I mean, they upload something quick, um, they cut off words, you know, very, everything's abbreviated. You know, how is this going to interplay with how people um, interact with Wikipedia content? And you can, I know, for example, I mean, if you're familiar with Yelp, um, it's a site in the U.S. that has, you know, recommendations for restaurants and um, services, like in your local area. There's, you know, obviously... Uh, comparable sites across uh, the world, but you know they made a conscious effort for two reasons. But one of the reasons is not in, uh, not allowing people to write reviews through a mobile device. There's various reasons for that, but one is that because they see the quality of those reviews go down, right? So, you know, how can people contribute to Wikipedia on mobile is going to be a big question. And in what ways are they going to do that? I mean, this is going to be a big challenge for us. Because maybe it's a gateway. People like just to upload pictures and benchmark it. Maybe it's watch list. I mean, we're going to have a whole like swath of user research we're going to have to go through. And we're going to rely on a lot of you guys to kind of talk to a lot of people, give us some comments. Because this is something that's going to be very new territory for everyone. And we're going to have to figure out what is going to be that engagement level with people on mobile, especially from a contribution perspective. So things that are coming up, one of the most important things is testing on you know many devices. Like, like I mentioned, the Werfel database earlier is like 14,000 devices. At the foundation, we can't afford to buy that many devices. So we look at the community, you know, for testing, um, <coughs> and we we really like people to you know if they see something an anomaly on their phone, if they could take a screenshot, upload that in a bug report, you know, that's great. We can't promise that we get to it instantly, but like being able to see the screenshot, see what's not rendering correctly you know, is really important. Um, and besides physically having the devices, we're also looking at using some services that will provide uh, access to devices over the internet. And so, that, you know, if we don't have that device, we might be able to use, like, Device Anywhere or one of those services to be able to uh, replicate the bug that you're seeing in the bug report. Um, another big thing is the interface improvements. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, my first step was just getting the the Ruby gateway implemented in, as the PHP extension. So I've just used the exact same interface that they had there um, and haven't really made any improvements. So now that we have this Warful database, able to know more about the phone, we, you know, we should have richer UIs on the various phones that can support them and you know, use the device to its uh, full capabilities. Um, and then obviously, like we mentioned before, just editing and content creation on mobile devices is, is important. Probably won't be able to do you know full article editing on the phone unless we're really smart and have some you know brilliant UX people in the community that can come up with a great way. But you know just any kind of editing would be great. Just like small block editing would be nice, and then uh, uploading of photos would be great. I think we never have enough photos about something, and that's a really easy use case on a mobile device, especially with a smartphone. Yeah, and. Also, with regard, regard to that, I mean, we're going to be trying to be as very creative as possible 
like leverage partnerships out there like you know Flickr you can upload you know pictures to them and you know market under like you know Creative Commons license do we like partner with them so we can you know get some of that like people can upload through them on a mobile device and then you know send it over to Wikimedia Commons I mean there's lots of things we're going to try to think about that we can partner with people to make sure that you know we get people more involved regardless if it's like they're accessing Wikipedia first and they're going through some other site you know to experience us So besides just the, the mobile web experience, we're also looking at having you know, apps. Right now we have the, the iOS app and the App Store, but we'd like to be able to have a, a presence on Android as well as the you know, Windows Mobile, uh, WebOS, uh, Symbian. So one of the technologies that we're uh, looking at using and we're probably going to move forward with is uh, PhoneGap, which will allow us to make one implementation that then will work on all of the different devices as a, a native app. And once we get that in place, we'd be able to replace the iOS app and then have the same functionality you know, across the board on all the various devices. Pardon? So we've had, we have some uh, you know, kind of prototypes in PhoneGap, but, but we don't have anything fully implemented. But we're actually, it's Natobi, right? Yeah, Natobi. So the makers of PhoneGap is a company called Natobi, and we're actually talking to them. Uh, and they would be providing professional services to do you know, some of the, the uh, first implementation. So if anyone knows how to use PhoneGap to its full capability, it's it's going to be them. So hopefully, you know, it'll be a really great solution. Well, you know, some people just love having apps <laughs> and you know, they're used to using apps on the phone and and they want to have it, but there's no super strong reason. You know, obviously our, our core focus is going to be at, on the the mobile web you know, experience and and focus on that, but you know, being able to have apps can provide additional functionality that isn't available in the, the web. So, I mean, we're, we're trying to be practical at the same time. I mean, our focus is mobile web. But the thing is, you know, there are people that want, like, they want to have apps, and that's how they engage on the first level. But, you know, we're not going to create a lot of native apps ourselves. That's why Patrick's talking about we're going to use PhoneGap and kind of have, a, you know, an implementation where we just, it's going to be more like a shell app and redirect to our mobile web. You know, because you know, we're not going to be able to develop native apps all across the board. So what we're trying to do is have a scalable approach where, you know, there will be at least be like, that will just be your first interaction, but it'll still redirect you to mobile web. So I, I was actually at a, a presentation by the PhoneGap folks at the open source conference, and one of the things that they said is that they are trying to make themselves obsolete and increasingly push towards the stuff that is only accessible via native access to the phone right now being represented in HTML5. And the way you develop a phone gap application is by leveraging HTML5 technology uh, as much as you can. So there's a pretty natural path for us to move closer and closer to the open web while still being present in the, the app stores at the same time. And of course, we will primarily uh, get people to the, the mobile gateway as quickly as possible. So, question in the back. Yeah, we've talked to them a little bit, um, you know, and obviously we're going to try to move forward with as many partnerships as, as possible. Um, but you know, as we have more information, we'll, we'll gladly share that. So, I mean, yeah, that's really we already started talking to Opera, and we've already saw some issues because even when I was in Russia, um, we we're doing some testing like on uh, Java phones that you know used Opera Mini. We know Opera Mini is kind of used in a lot of places, and we were even having issues in terms of the way Cyrillic was rendered you know, on Wikipedia. So we know we have to start engaging. And we're, problem is we're engaging everybody. So we need, we're having a lot of discussions. We're trying to actually onboard a couple more people so we can start dealing with a lot of these partners. But we're looking at like operators, device makers, browser makers, and seeing where can we get massive scale across the board. But they're actually, you know, near the top of our list. Yeah, I actually, and I've actually, you know, worked last week on a fix to help some of the Cyrillic rendering issues and, and things that we were seeing with the browser. So going back to, you know, our research, I mean, 
we're looking at kind of the ethnographic research. We have the quantitative research that we're going to start pretty soon. And then feedback that we get from community members and then from different partners is we're going to have, a, we're going to show you the wiki page at the end where a lot of you can contribute and see what's going on. But we're going to start listing out all of the possible features and start ranking those things according to like what makes sense, what we can scale out, what seems to be um, the most in need in terms of like the mobile experience. So what I'm just showing you right now is we're just, you know, um, assembling a lot of this information and then we have to kind of go through it and what we're going to do is a very open process so you could actually go to which I'll show you the website later you know our meta page on mobile projects and people are already listing out like what features they want to see and then we want to back that up with data we want to see like how people are engaging then start pushing out things that we can, can support those features that people will need for a better mobile experience so Part of our strategy, like we're saying that we're doing now, is we want to make sure with these partnerships we have more reach. One of the big ones we're doing is with mobile operators all across the world. And so what we're going to try to do is work as with many people as possible. Um, obviously, it's going to be you know difficult you know managing a lot of companies here and there, but our whole thing really is to expand reach with partners on a first level. And while we're doing this research, we're going to try to figure out how do we get people to contribute. So those are the two main things to look at if you look at our objectives on mobile. It's increased reach and increased contribution. Um, they're going to run in parallel at some point, but there are like, like I said, if you looked at that ecosystem chart that I showed you before, we have community developers that are going to help us engage in you know, making the experience you know, with our extension a little bit better. We're going to focus on you know, making the APIs more robust, better documentation, so developers can pull Wikipedia content and render it in a lot of different ways and make it you know, more applicable for like, people in contextual uh, information when they're on a mobile device. And then partners to make sure that on a marketing side, people are aware about Wikipedia, that they can get it on their phone, and then um, other opportunities like with device makers where it's integrated into like the OS so people can search for it more easily. So that eventually will lead to participation on all devices and if it becomes toasters and blenders we will include that too. And beyond just kind of all the partnership ideas we're just thinking about ideas in general to make mobile just part of the overall experience that people have with Wikipedia. And like I talked about, when we went through some of the research, one of the prohibitive factors for people in developing countries is cost. They didn't want to use their mobile minutes, right, to access Wikipedia. So looking at ways where we can get partners to provide it for zero or cheap data plans. Um, we're looking at offline uh, ways. Um, I don't know if any of you went to the Open Zim talk. They have a QT version. Um, right now, um, obviously we'll see something hopefully in Android. That might be people's first experience with Wikipedia. When costs come down, then they can get online um, with mobile and hopefully contribute in the end. Uh, look for different partners we can provide with so where people can like link back to Wikipedia, share content. Obviously we talked about um, working with browser developers and then you know with Sebrin and Herard and, and those guys working to make sure like with Unicode that it supports multiple fonts, languages. Interesting enough, maybe donation campaigns. I know people have been contributing to Wikipedia, obviously, on the website. Donations on mobile is kind of up and coming. But interesting from just the user perspective is that if we're having, you know, 30% of the world, their only experience with the Internet is on mobile. And then, you know, for 70% of the world, most of their interaction will be on mobile by 2015. We want them to be engaged with the entire community experience. And part of that will be donations like through chapters and communities, and we want that to be, you know, a really great experience on mobile as well. Other thing is, you know, maybe we, we look at things in like a little of these niche markets, or can we do something that we create special tools or their partners, whether it's nonprofits, uh, UNICEF, where people can contribute like, um, like Guadani language, you know, different uh, uh, projects that, you know, are more uh, specific to like local communities. We don't know what those are. But if you guys have any ideas, we want you to kind of put those also on our meta site. And then this was something that was really big coming out of our India research. A lot of people were saying, well, you know, if I went to these cricket sites because cricket's really big, you know, I'd like it to redirect to like the Wikipedia article. So we might think about different partnerships where, you know, there's a lot of people in these worlds that 
don't really know that you can you know, link directly out to Wikipedia and look at that content. So maybe we think about some content partnerships where people start engaging with Wikipedia through any other experience that they have out there. And so right now at the foundation, this is like our team. Uh, Amit just joined, but you know, we're trying to do our best. Um, but we wanted to make sure that you can reach any of us. These are, you know, Patrick is right here. Thomas is uh, uh, director of mobile engineering and Mani and Parul are doing uh, research, but we're all pretty available. So you can look us up on, you know, the foundation site, contact us, you know, give us any of your feedback whenever you want. And as I talked about before, this is our mobile project site. So you can go to this and start adding like anything that you want if you have different comments. And you can see what's going on. Everything we have is open. So when we get more research information, you can just go in and click on, you know, you know, the research. We're gonna have more information on that link over there. There's actually different testing that we want to do, like you know what browsers are supported, and we'd like to get more of your feedback. So, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, you know we have our IRC uh, mobile Wikimedia mobile Wikimedia dash mobile. You could also um, join our mailing list. Um, the what's the mailing list? Mobile L. Mobile L, and then just go to our meta page. So we want people to kind of get engaged in all different levels because. This is a really open project, and you own this as much as anybody else does. Oh, and the other thing we have planned that's coming up, and you know, if you are interested in being a community developer, you know, adding a little more toward mobile. I mean, talk to Patrick later, but we're thinking of planning a hackathon probably early next year. Yeah, early next year, where we want a lot of people kind of thinking about where can they add more. And, w and we want that guy to get involved as well. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna go and talk to him later. But what we want to do is make sure that mobile is really on everybody's radar, and we want to make sure that even when we do some development, like community development, that people are also really thinking about mobile. So thank you. This was supposed to be more of a panel discussion, but obviously there's only two of us here. So if you have any questions, um, we'll be here all afternoon. Uh, feel free to like ping us, but we have 30 minutes right now because we ended a little early. So, anybody want to ask us anything? We're not directly working with the um, with the OS providers right now to add the, that support, but one of the technologies that we're um, looking at using our web fonts to be able to render things like that, and I think Seabrain could could talk you know more about that if you want to, but. But that that appears to be the most hopeful way, you know, to implement that. I think Eric has something he wants to add as well. So uh, we are investing in building a, uh, a small localization team uh, at the the foundation that uh, will work on these technologies, and uh, that relates both to the desktop experience and the mobile experience because these issues are relevant to both uh, views of the site. So that is input methods, font delivery. Uh, search indexing and all the other issues where indic fonts and other fonts and other languages um, might cause problems. Um, whether web fonts are uh, the right technology for mobile font delivery, we'll have to experiment with. Uh, certainly, we have a web fonts media wiki extension, which you can check out right now. If you Google media wiki extension web fonts, you'll you'll find it. Uh, that already uh, has a first implementation for a number of indic languages uh, that delivers the appropriate font through the browser.
Um, that's an interesting question. Actually, we've kind of talked about a lot about this, and you know, we don't have a lot of the capabilities internally to do this. It, it would be a lot about partnerships, and you know, we had like an interesting meeting with Google, for example, and you know, in terms of like voice recognition, is there ways we can leverage other people's resources to make sure, like, you know, people can actually, like, if you, you know, highlight certain text, then it actually would read the text back to you. Um, so that's going to be their engagement. Uh, there's offline, obviously, for people we talked about a little bit more, which is we would look at mobile and offline. That's kind of like just platform extension to make sure that that's accessible. But, you know, a lot of it is that we have to kind of work with, you know, other partners out there that are going to be able to provide that. And if it's like, well, they, they need help to just create an extension in our platform, you know, maybe we can get community support to do that. But, you know, right now is what we're trying to do is just expand, you know, basic reach on mobile. I mean, we, we're kind of like laying out those priorities, but what would help is kind of identifying those partners that are gonna be able to, you know, um, extend like, you know, for people that have certain like learning disabilities and they can get better access to the content, we would have to work with them to be able to do it effectively. Any other questions? Any other questions, anyone else? Rob, do you have anything you wanna throw at us? <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a lot of things. The thing is, even like Wikipedia, just kind of on the marketing side, um, everyone kind of only thinks about like technically what we can do, but there's a lot of awareness that has to be out there. I mean, we'd like to get a lot of these partners, even like when they talk about to their customers, like this is a community site, um, everybody can contribute to this. We want them to actually help with their messaging to make sure that you know people know that Wikipedia is very different. This is all run by community. A lot of people can get involved. Um, and so we want to see if we can leverage some of their resources to do that. And, you know, that's what they're kind of good, good, good about. Um, some of these partners, obviously, we have to kind of figure out what their strengths and weaknesses are. I mean, operators, you know, I mean, truthfully, they're not very innovative, but so we can use them more as for reach. Maybe on device maker side, um, they could help us create like a native app where it's easy to con contribute on Wikipedia, like on a tablet or so forth, where we won't have the resources to do that. So we will always kind of look at what those strategic opportunities are. So overall, like we're looking at reach and like contribution, but if something comes up that could be a little bit more opportunistic where we might be able to run some tests, you know, here and there, like with device makers, we're gonna, we're gonna do that when the opportunity comes up. So I kind of have a question for you guys. What, what would you like to see on mobile that you don't have currently, you know, like? Specifically, like with Wikipedia. Anyone? It's perfect. <laughs> so, like offline integrated into the phone? Okay. Editing? Like full article editing or just block level editing or yeah, whatever you can get? Full editing. All right. <laughs> and moving right along. Uh, <laughs> no, just Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, it seems to be coming out of a lot of research as well. Yeah, and I think you know, like I keep mentioning that Warful database, but being able to know the the capabilities of the phone, you know, are really important. So if we see that you can handle multimedia content, there's no reason we shouldn't have that integrated as well. Pardon? Yeah, geotagging, good feature. Yeah, so the like access to other projects, that's you know great. Like, yeah, because it is implemented as a MediaWiki extension, it works on any of the the MediaWiki installations. So like right now, you can go to the you know Wiki News and any of the other Wiktionary, anything else, and it it should work. Yeah, the redirect rule is not running, but yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hold on. Yeah, I think with the the editing, one of the the biggest difficulties is just the user experience. You know, how do we represent that? You know, well, you know, on the phone and get people to to be able to edit. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we know that there's probably, I mean, we've seen, like, the voice recognition technology has really been taking off, and okay. there's, yeah, there's a lot of potential where basically maybe the editing, because, you know, for a lot of people to type on a keyboard, maybe, if, especially if it supports multiple languages, they could, like, actually just talk into the content, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, so we'll do a lot of testing around that, and there's block editing around certain parts of that where, you know, maybe they manually change some of it, but we have to... It has to be a different experience, right? Because they're not going to have a full-on keyboard. They're going to be on the go, but we want to make sure that that's possible. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a good feature. Okay. Yep, that would be nice. Awesome. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Anyone? Yes, like block level editing. One of the other things with editing on the phone that we have to worry about is like concurrency becomes more of an issue. Like people may take longer on the mobile device to edit, and already another edit has come in, you know, from another device. So how do we represent that? You know, about ticking people off. If it happened to you like three times in a row, you'd probably be pretty sick of yeah, that experience. Other things out of your control, like let's say you're in a certain country, and then let's say your your network strength is or your your network <laughs> capabilities are not as as good. So you could be contributing some something, but somebody in the developed world may have much faster access. And you know when you're making a change and you go back, I mean we don't know how we're going to get around some of those issues. But you know part of it is we got to have to communicate a lot about like you know what are these, what are the, the the strengths and minuses about you know contributing on mobile and be able to be aware about that. Anyone else? Uh, the auto Port article feedback to the mobile. Yeah. Yep, that's a great. And I think that you know that's a great uh, first step towards be people being able to contribute on the mobile experience. You know, is having that tool available. I mean, I think there's like if we break this out into like two ways, it's kind of existing editors. Like, what do they want to see in terms of you know the way to con contribute on mobile? And some of them want like logic mm -hmm. and they're really familiar with. And then it's like, how do we get a whole new new subset of people involved? I mean, they're going to be looking for something different. So we'll probably break those out and. Yeah, I mean the possi <laughs> possibilities <laughs> there. Like, no, you cannot access that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's not uh, anything that you know that I know that we're actively looking at right now, but like, it definitely could be on the future roadmap you know, to be made available. Anyone else? 
Anyone else? Anyone? Anyone? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Much more what? Mm -hmm. it, when you say track each other, track how? Okay. For four square pedia. <laughs> like badges? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think that's kind of really important what we look into a little bit further is like how do you take advantage of the mobility? I mean, that's what the device is very different because people are moving around and, you know, we were kind of like just brainstorming with a lot of other people and something could be interesting where if you're in front of like, let's say a monument and there's not a good article, you know, and you're right in front of it and, you know, it, like with geolocation, it can signal this article needs to be edited, you know, and you're physically in front of that and there, would that cause more motivation for somebody to participate if you're actually right in front of it? You know, that would be an interesting experiment. But I think that's a really good point is kind of figuring out from like contextual information, is this going to drive different behavior because that device, not only is it smaller in the form factor, is there, but they actually are at that location. And is that going to, like you're saying, not only like communicate with other Wikipedians, but how can we take advantage of that, you know, they're on the move. And I think we'll just elect you to like run that committee for right now. Like you can. <laughs> so, anyone else have anything? Yeah, the, definitely. The watch list and flag revisions would be uh, pretty easy to implement and would be important. Like offline Wiktionary? Yeah, they definitely would. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, we could do that. That would yeah. be, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally it makes sense. Yeah, and if I guess that's depending on your phone. I mean, if it's kind of a you know uh, an old generation phone like that supports like a micro SD or something. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fairly easy information to surface, you know. And one of the other things that we're looking at at the foundation are like collaborative editing and right. some things like that. Yeah. So, um, so we have a, a team of people that are working on that. So even if we could figure out like a way to work that into mobile as well, you know could be important. So anyone else have anything? Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, one of the things, like, if we end up using PhoneGap and going that direction, we'll kind of have, like, a reference app 
for all of the phones. So if someone wanted to re-implement that in something that's outside of PhoneGap, you know, they'd be, at least be able to have something to A, B against. So, anyone? Anyone else have any? So we have 10 minutes left. Um, we can go now or go now. <laughs> <laughs>